This is a topic, Heather, that I have been trying to get people interested in for my whole career. You know, I've gone to AP Press, I've gone to USA Today, you know, I've gone to local newspapers. I have tried to get anybody interested in this topic of leukemia viruses present in our animal foods, you know, particularly in our dairy products. Leukemia viruses, yes, we have a problem with infection of our cattle in the United States with bovine leukemia viruses. In fact, nearly 90% of the herds are infected infected. And half the cows in these herds are infected. Oh, we'll get into some more revealing statistics as we go on. As far as the beef herds, you know, 39% are infected. You know, we're talking about steaks and well, things so you like that. You can get it by oh, eating yeah. steaks too? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, not so, just in milk. Not just milk. Okay. Just, it's just the dairy herds are so okay. infested with this virus. Once you're infected, you're infected for life. You never get over it. You'd be a cow or a human being, you're infected for life. It's such a problem in the cattle industry that if you happen to have a bull, you know, a male cow who's infected, they won't hire him out as a stud. You know, so somebody's taking this seriously. You diagnose whether or not somebody has this infection with blood tests. You look for antibodies or you look for the actual virus. And we're going to be looking for both. And do recall that that human is very, very similar to cow or bovine. This is a problem worldwide. This is a pandemic all over the world. There are certain countries that have more of a problem than others. Like in red there, you notice the countries that have a high infestation. There's an awful lot of them. Canada, 70%, US, 90%, Argentina, 84%. And it's all the places where people eat meat, meat, meat and, and drink, drink milk. Yeah. How about human leukemia in the United States? Now we're talking about humans, not cows. What we find is that the uh, estimated number of cases is about 57,000 annually of leukemia. These are children, a lot of them. Some are, of course, adults, but you know, a good share of them are children. And there are 24,000 deaths every year from leukemia. Now, remember, I told you that both of these viruses are very similar. They're called retroviruses. And the human virus looks almost identical to the cow type virus. If you go to the doctor, say grandpa got lymphoma or leukemia, or your granddaughter, your little baby daughter got leukemia, and you go to the doctor and you, you ask the doctor, why did my loved one get leukemia? The standard answer in the medical business is, we don't know. We have no idea why your relative got leukemia. Do any of you own cats, a kitty cats? Well, when you take the cat to the veterinarian, annually, the veterinarian will offer a feline leukemia virus vaccination to your cat. Somehow veterinarians know that leukemia can be a viral infection. Somehow human doctors don't know this. Cattle farmers do, dairy farmers do. <laughs> <laughs> and so do veterinarians, but don't ask my colleagues. So the reason that this occurred for so many years, you know, pre-1970s, is because the virus is so similar. Our technology couldn't tell the difference between human and bovine leukemia viruses. It's too crude a technology. And then we had the development in the 70s of immunofluorescent technology, which is very sensitive and very specific. And what these investigators did, they were from UC Berkeley here in California, is what these investigators did is they went out on the street and they asked ask about 250 people for a blood sample, just randomly. Ask them for a blood sample, and they took their blood samples back to the lab, and they analyzed them by this immunoblotting, immunofluorescent technique, and they found that 74% of the people had been infected. They had antibodies. They had been infected with bovine leukemia viruses. Now you say, well, does that mean the infection is still alive in their bodies? 74%. Fortunately, the body is really tough, and most people don't come down with leukemias and lymphomas, but 74% of the people in our society are infected. That's with, we tell that by antibodies, which are is the reaction of our body to that particular virus. But how about looking at actual viruses? Investigators looked at actual viruses. For example, there's several investigations here, but when they did a study at Kaiser Permanente in San Rafael, they asked 95 women in the audience to give blood samples, and they went and looked for the actual virus. And they found that a third of them had actual viruses live viruses incorporated in their cells. Bovine leukemia virus DNA. You know, we're talking about RNA. RNA is similar to DNA. It's in the genetic process of protein metabolism and so on. If you find the representation of bovine leukemia virus in people, you find in various countries around 30 to 40 percent of people have actual live viruses. And these are people with breast cancer. And you go and look at people who have lung cancer, you find 80 percent are infected with this virus. Somebody's concerned. All right. 
So the next question you have is, well, I'm okay. You say to yourself, I'm okay because I only drink pasteurized dairy products. And so I don't run any risk or my children don't run any risk because I pasteurize food. And the research to date shows that pasteurization kills this virus. Let's look at the research. The research involves taking cow viruses and injecting them with a needle into sheep. There are 25 cow sheep pairs that have been studied. 25, that's what your child's health depends upon, are these 25 animal sets. That's it, it's old studies. They were done decades ago. Nobody's done any further research to see what the real risk is. 25 animal sets, oh, excuse me, 25, yeah. Animal sets in four different experiments, you can look them up. That may make some of you feel okay because at least 25 cows showed no spread after pasteurization. But consider people who drink unpasteurized dairy products. This happens a lot. Among farm families, if you ask them if they've ever consumed raw milk, 35 to 60% of them say they have. And three and a half percent of them said they have consumed raw milk within the last seven days when you ask farmers. And besides that, pasteurization doesn't always work, folks. There's some breakthroughs in pasteurization, failures at the plants. And the other thing you have to consider is this, and this will take a little in-depth study on your part. But when you pasteurize dairy products, you break the RNA and the DNA into fragments. The heat does that, breaks them into fragments. And these fragments are easily incorporated into the genetic material of human beings. At least that's what we worry about, that these uh, RNA fragments, even though they are, you know, they won't cause infection, at least obvious infection in the, in the time set out to study. When you break up the bovine leukemia virus into various fragments, these may be incorporated into our genetic material. We don't know that, but we're concerned because we know these fragments are involved in proliferation, metastasis, progression, and survival. And you can look up the research. Are you concerned? Well, next time you pour your child or grandchild a tall, cool glass of leukemia virus, think about this lecture and the whole industry is out there promoting your kids to get hooked at a young age. You know what they say about the tobacco industry? You got to hook them young. Well, the dairy industry says the same thing. They hook them young and they make them sick. And I've only talked to you about one of the problems with dairy. I haven't talked to you about the heart disease, other ways of getting cancer, constipation, autoimmune diseases, all kinds of problems and many other infections. But this particular example with this research, which is all within the last few years, except for when I had to go back to show you the origin, this particular topic you should consider current and one darn reason you should give up all dairy in your home.